Nice one, cool dudes. It's two days since I finished the South Downs, and I thought I'd do a video about the top 10 things that I took. Obviously, there's the big three things. The rucksack, which was the Osprey Exos 58, very good. The sleeping bag, which was a nature hike, CWM 800. I got the wider one, 200 centimetres by 80 centimetres, which was supposed to have winter lining, but I was pretty cold when it got down to six degrees. So I reckon comfort's probably about 10 degrees on that. And the tent, which was nature hike Mongar, yes, Mongar 20D, which I got from AliExpress, but you can also get on Amazon. I thought that was pretty good. Anyway, what are top 10 things? Get on with it. The list of everything I packed is below with links to Amazon and to other places. You can get cheaper from other places. But at number 10, a glasses strap. And although you do look like you are an 80 year old man, it's so handy just having the glasses there the whole time. It saves you from rooting around while you're walking. Pretty cool, not so cool. Pretty cool, not so cool. For five quid for a decent one, it's worth it. Number nine. What is this, a space suit? No, it is just a sort of thermal sleeping pad you put under your mattress. And you won't believe the difference this makes. This is about 80 grams and it takes a bit of space in your rucksack. But when my hand came off the side of my mattress and was on the ground, it was freezing. When it was on this, it wasn't that cold at all. Hmm, a very scientific explanation. But for five pounds, a definitely worth getting. Number eight. Ooh, the Thermarest sit mat. Amazingly, there aren't as many benches as I thought, and if it's damp and you just want to sit down for lunch, this is invaluable. It weighs about 50 grams or something ridiculous. It also works as an insulator. So on the last night when um, I was on my mat and I found, um, how should we say that my, a buttock area was slightly colder. I slipped this under my sleeping mat and hmm, I never felt so good. Really useful. I, I know it seems like it's an overpriced thing, but I would take this on every single walk. Number seven. I've combined two things here. The South Downs Way guidebook and an app on my phone, View Ranger. And this is really great for planning. And I really love the distance chart at the end. It gives you ideas where to camp, where to eat, just how high all the hills are. So you can work out how difficult a climb's gonna be each day. The route is really well signposted. There's a couple of points where you can make mistakes. I did. And View Ranger is an app where you just download a GPS file of the route and you just follow the arrow. And 98% of the time, it's right, sometimes it does waver a little bit, but you can just see where you are on the map and if you've gone off course. So the combination of these two things is a uh, must. Number six. Oh yes, it is the Tilly hat. I bought this on sale for 30 quid because no one wanted a green one and I love it. It's the LH something six, which has got a vent here which stops you from sweating too much or allows air in but also when it rains it's really great when it's windy it's really great it's got two straps which means it stops it from blowing off and if you're doing coastal walks or anywhere windy that is also invaluable yeah it might not look that cool but who looks cool walking apart from me number five is my bum bag or fanny pack or whatever you want to call them i spent ages trying to find one of these that i could use and I wanted one that was waterproof because my um, backpack doesn't have hip pockets. This one here is the North Face Lumber Bag. It expands out so you can fit quite a lot of stuff in there. Ideally, for my cam, which I was filming on, in the first day when I got caught in the rain, I could put that in here, do the roll top thing and not be worried about it being totally ruined. It's got little pockets for snacks as well here pocket at the front you can put your wallet in and it just takes some of the weight off from your back. My pack weighed 12 kilograms without food 
and water and the water was two kilograms and the food was 2.5 kilograms so it was pretty heavy and then I had about a kilogram of stuff in here so there's quite a lot to take I suppose most of it is food and does go down but that was really useful the waterproof lumber bag yeah I like it number four I bought quite a lot of clothing from Decathlon which is cheap and it was all really good uh, the puffer jacket was brilliant the fleece was maybe a bit too heavy but good and this waterproof jacket was a saviour it was only about 13 quid and um, it withstood a heavy shower and I ended up wearing it most days on the downs when it was really really windy it just was perfect as a windbreaker so you can just chuck it in a bag it's pretty light there probably are ones that are more breathable which are better in the hotter seasons but in September that did the job blooming lovely mate number three well it's two things again first of all this stuff Vaseline what did you get up to in your walk Marek I just slathered my feet in this and your thighs where you might chafe just bring some Vaseline and also great for your lips as well if it's windy and that in combination with Compete you can get bigger heel plaster ones or ones for your toes or other small ones it sort of just makes a sort of second skin over the start of the blister so as soon as you get the slightest hot spot just put that on and it just saves your feet I met some people on the first day or second day rather who were giving up because of blisters and they never heard of Compede or never Vaseline their feet you're just asking for it number two trekking poles who on earth does a long distance walk without trekking poles it's a nightmare going uphill it's quite terrifying sometimes when you're going on a steep downhill path on a windy day and I wouldn't be without these these are just cheap ones so about 20 quid um, I glued the rubber feet on with epoxy resin because I kept on losing them and even then on the last day when fell off just get some trekking poles to save your feet if you're over 40 especially like me they are invaluable no they're essential yes they are and number one probably the thing that has improved my walking life no end last year i invested in some ultra olympus 3.0s which have got a wide toe box so if you're prone to blisters and plantar fasciitis it lets your toes spread out so it takes more of the impact and the cushioning is incredible it's less impact on your feet and i was able to walk much longer distances with much less pain i can't believe it 100 miles with hardly any blisters i love these shoes they have enabled me to become a long distance explorer well that is it for my top 10 below is a list of all the things i took with amazon links everything was pretty much used apart from a mini roller and the trail for digging holes because I just used normal facilities but I don't know how I make my pack lighter maybe try and get smaller toiletries a smaller towel maybe I don't know how people get these ultralight packs and camp without a mild comfort yeah I took two pillows but yes I need them to get sleep if you've got any questions about the gear put them below and i will answer all your gear questions or if you'd like a separate gear video i hope this comes in useful if you do buy anything click on the links to help support the Caldrews walking club and why not join and get a badge a notebook a postcard a map a membership card what else do you want in life i don't know all right that's about it thanks for watching and remember, stay cool. See you later.